Okay, today what I have to do is install a condenser fan switch on this piece of junk up here. This thing's a, some somebody put parts together years ago. It's wired down so it doesn't blow off the roof. The customer just doesn't want to change anything. It's been like this for a long time. I wanted to rebuild build a uh, sheet metal cover for it, but he just doesn't want to. So, I just uh, recently changed the compressor on this. And the reason it went bad was the, this control, which controls the condenser fans. The control that control the condenser fans went bad. That's it right there. I un I took the screws out of it. But uh it went bad and the fans didn't come on. The head pressure built up really high and it burnt the compressor out. Unfortunately I had installed the compressor in March, I believe it was, and it only made it until uh, January this year and if the of course if the condenser fan switch that old thing didn't fail it would have lasted much longer but today we're going to work on changing that I bypassed it to keep uh, one fan running until I could get the control and uh, I'll rewire that too okay I got my mat to kneel on. It's another mat. I keep losing the mats. But it's a foam doormat type thing. Uh, here's a new control. I'm going to put BX connectors on it. And put my wire into it. The control. That's the condenser fan cycling control. A 2054 Renko. Oh, it's good. Fundamentally the same thing that was on there. I just want to point this out. Look at how this is wired. It's just two wires. They look at like number 10 wires. And the guy just pulled them through the holes there. What happens is the vibration sometimes it'll eat right through the plastic if there's enough vibration and it'll um, short out them. Then you lose the compressor. It's a good point. I, the dot on the sight glass is nice and green. That's a sign that I pulled a good vacuum on the system. Nice and dry. But I've got to pull the wires apart in here and get at this now. What I like to do is, I like to put a da dab of leak lock on the threads for the screws, the mounting screws. That I've had them come off and come loose and fall off sometimes. And it acts like Loctite. Leak lock is good stuff. Oh, okay. just about to say, this is a good tool. Okay, try it again. This is a good tool. Okay, it's a screw holder. Helps a lot when your hands are cold, especially. 
too easy to drop these little screws and they kind of always disappear someplace and you have to go looking through your truck for another one. Okay. All this is going to do is the feet go into the fans. This is going to break it, make it or break the circuit. So you just find the wire going to the fans. One of the live wires going to the fans, and you just break that leg, run it through this control. It's fairly basic. What this will do is it'll build up my head pressure because when the head pressure gets too low, it's so cold. The refrigerant it doesn't flow through the uh, um, expansion valve properly you don't get a good healthy pressure drop and you need you need a good pressure drop to pinch the tops of those over a little bit so they tend to stay on there. And this system is a R134A system. Head pressures I want somewhere between 125 and 150, somewhere like that. 145 is good. Good and tight. Gonna go anywhere. That's what we like. Number ten wire. Jeez. It's going to a contact group for us.
I like this crimping tool because it has that tooth on it. And I can put a nice dent in the crimp. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty solid. Okay, fundamentally you have L1 and L2. L1 runs to the control, makes contact, comes out of the control, goes to each of the fans, goes through the fan motors, and then back to L2. So all we're doing here is making and breaking the live leg going to the fan motors. Okay, that's good and that's good. All right, let's work on this end. See what kind of pressures we get. Right now, the new control is set to kick in at like 275 pounds pressure with a difference of 40. the system on now. Press is running. Pressures are pretty low. It's just so cold up here. Taking a little time for the uh, refrigerant to come back. That's why our suction pressure dropped and now it's coming. The refrigerant's starting to return from the evaporator coil. It's gotta go th the refrigerant's gotta go from the um, receiver tank down through the evaporator coil and come back. And now it's up to 14 pounds suction pressure. Up to 140 pounds, and the fans haven't come on yet. So it's, it's set pretty high, so I'm going to lower the setting now.
We're up to 170. Hundred and eighty should kick in in this. There it goes right there. Kicked in at a kicked in at a hundred and ninety. And it kicked out at a hundred and forty-five. So I'm gonna lower it a little bit more. What this will do is it, this will maintain a good head pressure to push the liquid refrigerant down through the expansion valve. It's so cold up here we're getting you know plenty of condensing. Get a blast of hot air coming out. Feels good. I shut off at what 132 or so. In the summertime, it'll just stay on all the time. You don't want the fans running constantly because then the head pressure gets way too low, and then it just the system doesn't work effectively. You just don't have enough pressure drop across the expansion valve. And it kicked in at 178. And... Okay. It's got a 40-pound a, a difference. So it's whatever it cuts in at, it'll be 40 pounds different. What I'm going to do is just lower it a little bit more. big snowflakes today. Not very many of them. A couple snowflakes going by. It's pretty. Right near the throughway. 90. Nice neighborhood. A little liquor store, convenience store type, um, you know, beer, wine, soda, typical Indian, another Cleveland Indian here. Okay, kicked in at 170. out at about 130. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. And the warmer weather, it'll run longer, of course. The, uh, the only stress it does is on the motors in time. Every time a motor, whether it's a compressor or a fan motor, every time a motor starts, that electrical surge uh, hurts the motor windings a little tiny bit. And if you have a lot of starts, that motor will live a shorter lifespan. I could put a I could put a a, a uh, headmaster valve on or a Sporlin ORA valve, which will regulate the head pressure. But on a small system like this, this usually works okay. Now I just have to put the cover on it and the new control. I have to stick my finger in there. I'll tighten it up with the screwdriver.
much as I've dated. It. It's January 27, 2015. on it and that way that way the customer if they say in like three years from now if they say you just put that on two months ago I'll be able to show them that it's a, it's a little older than two months and we want to tighten that up See you later here in Ohio. Later.